In this video, I will describe the functioning of a data structure called a FIFO. It's a buffer that follows a first in first out discipline. Uh, we've been looking at buffers uh, uh, of, of different kind. For example, a stack follows a last in first out discipline. So um, a, a buffer that follows a first in first out dis dis discipline is called a FIFO. And uh, to kind of get, give you some intuition behind why we would, we would need something like this, uh, it's common. Um, so uh, if you look at your lab eight, um, it's common for threads. You have a foreground thread, which in the case of lab eight is your uh, is your main thread, wherever your main is running. This is called your foreground thread. And we have a, a background thread in the case of uh, lab eight. Again, that is your cystic handler. This is your cystic handler. So, so what we um, what we've done in lab eight is we use a way for these two to communicate. That is uh, the background thread. Uh, we can think of the background thread as a producer. Oops. We can think of the background thread as a as a producer which produces items. Uh, in our case, it just writes it, producer that produces and writes an item. Uh, we might, I don't, uh, you may have called this an ADC mail, which is also a mailbox. You write an item to this mailbox and this is carrying, a, a holds a sample. Every time you gra grab a sample, you dump the sample into the ADC mail and the back and the foreground thread um, is uh, is notified of this or it, there's uh, you also set some sort of a status so the foreground thread there is n knows that there is work and the foreground thread is a consumer and the consumer consumes this item uh, it consumes it and then processes it the processing it does for us in our case is to display it So, so uh, in a simple system like this, if the producer is producing at a constant rate and the consumer is consuming at a constant uh, rate, um, in this particular case, as long as the producer doesn't produce uh, faster than the consumer can consume, uh, we'll be okay with a simple, simple buffer like this. Um, in in some systems, we may we may want to. Um, make it so that the producer can produce as it produces and the consumer can consume at its leisure and they don't have to be tied together. So uh, so if, our, if the communication has to be a little more sophisticated, if you want the communication, so this is basically our communication between the two threads. If you want our communication uh, to be a, to be a little more sophisticated rather than simply sharing just a global, uh, a variable instead of say sh sharing just a global variable if you want to uh, if you want the producer to produce items and we want the consumer to consume items but they don't want to we don't want to tie them in lockstep we can use something a little more sophisticated uh, what we do in that case is we use a a buffer into which and you can think of the buffer as a as in that in this case a queue if you will a queue is is another word for a first in first out because in a queue the first person who enters a queue is the first person to leave the queue so now we have the producer which can add items to the queue and the consumer that can consume items from the queue and because this buffer is no longer uh, a single item we can think of this buffer as an 
array of locations and we're gonna we, we would we should implement it in such a way that that uh, the order in which items are put are uh, are the order in which items can be removed uh, so so in this particular case we are we are ensuring that that order by using uh, using this notion of a queue so let's see how we can implement a uh, FIFO so as uh, as FIFO uh, is a new data structure and in keeping with what we've been doing so far um, every time we implement a data structure or a module this is our module we will try to use good design principles which means that we will we will write a module in its own a fifo dot c and a fifo dot h um, actually let me write them in the in a different order we write it the fifo dot h and a fifo dot c this is the interface and this is the implementation. And uh, we'll keep our interface very simple. Uh, we will allow a user who wants to use a buffer to either initialize. So our one of the routines we export is a FIFO in it, uh, which for us doesn't take anything, doesn't return anything. For now, we will keep it simple. Uh, and this is called to initialize a one-time initialization of a data structure. Uh, we will have a second um, second routine, a FIFO put, if you will, uh, put, which adds to the queue. You can think of this as an NQ operation. And um, for now, we will assume that we are going to just enqueue characters. Uh, the, the items we enqueue can be any sophisticated structures. But for now, to keep it simple, we'll just say that we're going to enqueue characters. So it, it, um, it enqueues a character in, as, an, uh, as, an, uh, as an item. And it also returns a, 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 a result, which is a, exit, a return result, which tells us whether this whether the put was successful or not. We'll talk about that in just a second. Similarly, we will have a FIFO get, and this one will take a, uh, let's actually give it a name uh, just to be simple. So we, so we get the data to be added, uh, item to be added, and um, here we're gonna uh, have a character um, we will pass a pointer to a data data pointer so that the use the the data structure can populate this uh, this the pointer that we passed can populate that item that to which it's pointing with the value that you extracted from the FIFO and return it. Uh, we can still return a uint8 underscore t which is our, our return value. So this return value in both cases in both cases is either a zero or a one, zero or a one, zero for us is a, is a failure and one is a success. Um, clearly the, the reason why NQ and, and this I can call this DQ, the reason why NQ would fail, um, the failure here, the failure here simply means that the buffer is full. And the, and the failure here means that the buffer is empty. You can't extract an item from an empty buffer and you can't add items to a full buffer. You can't put into a full buffer. So those are, those are our public uh, functions that the module exports. Now, as far as the implementation is concerned, um, we'll well, um, I will first give you the some basic ideas behind it, and then we will write the code. So to start with, we will we will assume that um, assume that uh, the the FIFO dot C um, abstracts or uh, captures the information about our buffer in a simple array. So we have a FIFO. Uh, let's actually first define a size. So we'll define a hash diff. Let me give ourselves a little more space. Uh, hash define, we have a, a FIFO size. We will just keep this at some arbitrary number for now. Let's just make it five for now. We can change it. Um, that all depends on how much space you have and how big a buffer you want to maintain. So that's FIFO size. Uh, we will define a, 
uh, an actual array of uh, of items so for now our items are characters so this is my fifo itself and this is going to be of fifo size which in this case is an array of five elements um, we will make this static and the idea being that we want to um, we want to uh, keep this isolated to this file so that uh, a programmer who's accessing this data structure cannot uh, cannot either maliciously or uh, unintentionally um, compromise the co contents of our buffer. Uh, we will also define another uh, two, two variables. We will see what these are in just a second. Um, two variables that keep track of our operations, the, the dynamic state of our, of our data structure. Um, we will, these are going to be our get i. Um, actually, let me start with put i. And another a static variable, which is going to be my uint8 underscore t, a get i. And let's make a couple of notes about this. Um, put i will be the index for now, index of the next location where an, an where the next item index uh, index where let's just say index where the next item will be placed and get i will be the index of the oldest item in other words this is the item if i were to call uh, call get i uh, fifo get uh, the item at this index is the one that we're going to be returning so uh, before i write the code uh, i'm going to um, walk you through what 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 this data structure goes through as we perform puts and gets um, and how these variables put i and get i change so let's start um, let's start by looking at um, this this array um, i will say um, let's just take the simple example we have um, we have an array of let's say of size uh, five one two three four uh, so this is index zero one two three and four there are four items uh, five items because n let's just say n is equal to five in this case or the size is equal to five and i'm gonna say put i and get i let's say to start with put i is equal to zero and get i is also equal to zero so they're both zero uh, that is because we haven't added any item um, and so uh, because we're adding characters let's let's add some characters so um, remember that if i if let's let's say i add or put uh, four characters so i call uh, fifo put four times and each time i put a different character let's say i put hello i want to write the string hello i put an h as soon as i put the h uh, put i is going to move from zero so as soon as i put let me change the color here as soon as i put h uh, put i is going to go to one it'll be a one and but get i will still be at h if i put uh, another item let's say i put e uh, then put i will go to two because that's the next location i'm going to be writing to and uh, get i will still be at zero uh, let's add another item let's say i added uh, um, i'm going to just alternate these colors uh, so if i add let's say uh, uh, l now then as soon as i add an l this one will go there and put get i is still there if i add another l um, for a hello so if i add another l at this point um, what what will happen is our get i uh, put i will be at so i'm just gonna put move that here so put i will be here and get i will be at get i will be at um, uh, at this 
point get i will be still at at zero so we have added three i four items to the list now i'm i'm i just want to walk you through a couple of uh, observations our first observation uh, is that here's some observations um our first observation is um is that when um, when we have an empty buffer and i'm gonna make this assertion and i'm gonna show you why this as assertion hold empty empty buffer indicator how do i indicate what is an indication of an empty buffer we know when we started put i equals get i and that is an indication of an empty buffer does this hold always so so let's walk through and see if that holds always so i'm going to just assume for now that i i added four items and i'm going to remove four items so let's just go ahead and remove four items so if i consume four items so in other words after putting these four items now i'm going to consume four items or i'm going to call fifo get four times if i were to call fifo get four times uh, i'm not going to draw the picture right now but the five buffer is going to look like this and uh, the h e l l l r are there but they've been consumed so i don't really care what they are um, because as we will see consumption doesn't mean that you remove it you just you you return it to the user but you they may not it doesn't matter what they are so they might be h e l l still but it doesn't matter but what i'm what i'm what i'm getting at is when i consume all four of them what i will see is that i my put i which doesn't change through all the get, all the gets put i is still at a 4 and now get i is also going to be equal to a 4 in other words the second observation we're making is that putting an element into the buffer results in a put i index being incremented by 1 in other words put i equals put i plus 1 as we add items put i increments the third observation we make is getting an item out it results in get i being incremented by 1 so get i becomes get i plus 1 after four puts and four gets in this example we have both put i and get i being set equal to 4 at this point the buffer is empty and both put i and get i are equal to 4 so it it meets our requirements that put i and get i are equal to equal when the buffer is empty so now let's look at our next uh, next scenario let's say we add one item to this buffer uh let's say we add an item uh put uh, o into this uh, hello the next character being o if i were to put an item o into this buffer uh the next available slot is uh, here at uh, uh, at the top which is which is at 0 um so we will we would expect that the next item will be placed at because we've already placed as o at the bottom the next item will be placed at 0 that is our expectation uh but the way our increment of put i is being done the update to put i is being done if i were to increment put i simply by saying put i equals put i plus 1 i won't be moving put i to 0 i'll be moving put i to 5 as indicated here so the fix to this is to perform a mod operation on put i after the increment so because 5 which is 4 plus 1 5 mod 5 will be a 0 which means that the the uh, 
put i variable wraps around and goes to a zero. Uh, we see the same scenario uh, play out with the get i as well. And we'll take, th take that scenario uh, where let's say I added four more elements. So I've, um, I had my, uh, I start, I left off at, at where I had an O at the bottom, uh, the G, the get pointer, I'm just writing it as G, the get pointer, get I is at O and I added three elements. So P, which is my put I, is at an index of three right now. And and now when I perform my, when I remove this item, so get is updated, get has to be updated by the same operation where we perform a mod on it so that it can wrap around and get is actually get i plus one mod n. So this wrap around is a fundamental operation and what it really manifests if you visualize the buffer is to think of this buffer as a circular buffer that is uh, once the buff the index goes from 0 1 2 3 4 the next location is a zero so let's take another scenario to understand consequences of visualizing this buffer as a circular buffer let's say at some point i have added items to the buffer. So I added H, I added E, I added L, I added L. Now, if I added four items to the buffer, we know that, and I haven't consumed anything, we know that this is where my get I is going to be. Get I is going to have a value of zero. And right now, put I is going to be equal to four because that's where it's going to be pointing to. Now, the problem is, as you will see, is if I now add another item before consuming, so if I add another item, let's say I did a FIFO put with an O, which is my next letter that I'm adding. So if I add it, remember, remember that get I doesn't change, but put I changes. So what does put I get? Put I after after adding it if i were to add it and i'm going to put this uh, in a in a in a in a different color if i were to put this if i were to put an o here if i put the o here then what's going to happen is put i is going to be equal to that which is zero because that's what we said put i becomes put i plus 1 so put i becomes equal to zero now this is where we have a conundrum which is we said that an empty buffer is indicated by this condition where put i is equal to get i. Now, the question is, is the buffer full or empty? How can we tell if this is the only indicator we have, whether put i is equal to get i is the only indicator of an empty buffer? How do we distinguish between an empty buffer and a full buffer? And to to accommodate for this distinction or discerning this difference between a empty buffer and a full buffer, what we will do is we will not allow this item to be placed. In other words, even though n is equal to 5, the actual capacity of our system, the n is equal to 5, but actual capacity is not 5 it's n minus 1 which is equal to 4 so once we get to the once we added four items we will no longer allow so an addition of the fourth fifth item will not be allowed and that should be a, a full buffer and we accomplish that with our next condition which is let's our fourth observation is that a full buffer is indicated by a condition where we will do a speculative put if put i plus one if i were to put then put i plus one mod the five four size and i'm going to just do an n here because i don't want to write five four size if put i plus one mod n equals get i then I know in this particular case, at least, I know that I'm in trouble because by doing that, I will have filled the buffer. So that will be my full buffer check. Full buffer is that. And a consequence of all this is that we will always, uh, if we want a buffer of size 
five, we will uh, define the buffer to, if we want a capacity five, we will make it, make the actual um, five four size be one more than that, which is six. If you want it, if you make it five, the capacity will be four. So n minus one is actual capacity, uh, 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 given that n is the size of our uh, physical size of our, of our FIFO array. So now that we understand all of these, we, we are ready to write our code and the code should be, be pretty straightforward. So I'm not going to write the code here, but I will show you the code in Kyle. So here is my FIFO uh, .c. This is a project that will be made available to you. Um, so I'm going to write my 54.c. Uh, I'm making this 54b of size 7 because I have a little uh, program, a test program I wrote to, to test this and it works for a 54 of size 6. Uh, so it's just a, uh, a minor minor uh, change that I have to deal with. So my FISO, FIFO size is seven, which means that the actual usable size is n minus one, which in our case is six. Um, so we have a put i, we have a get i, we say index uh, to put the new item, index of the oldest item. Uh, this is the actual buffer we're declaring, which is of size FIFO size. Um, here is our init. We simply in initialize put i and get i equal to zero. Simple enough. Um, this is our FIFO put. As we saw, FIFO put should check for a um, FIFO put must check for a, a full buffer. This is a full buffer, and so we return a fail. And so the condition again, the check again is put i plus one mod five four size. If it's equal to get i, then we know that we have a full buffer. Um, and if it's not a full buffer, then we are good to go. So we add an item and we add an item by just saying five four uh, square brackets, put i and we add the item. And having successfully added the item, we're gonna update our put i and we're gonna return a success. Um, here is our FIFO get, simple enough. Um, notice that FIFO get, uh, it, it, uh, this is a good example of a parameter that is passed. This is a parameter passed by reference because you're passing a pointer. And so, uh, so we give a, a placeholder to the subroutine so that the subroutine can populate this placeholder with the with the item that it's ex it's extracting from the buffer and so again our check here is uh, this is an empty uh, buffer and so we fail um, when if put i is equal to get i if it is if it is if it is not a failure we know that we have an item at least one item in the buffer so we consume it uh, we know that get i it holds the address uh, index of the item so we simply take it and put it in the into the into the location that the user passed us um, the caller passed us we update get i and we return a success so that's our our code. Um, so let's um, let's write some uh, 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 a little driver to exercise it. Uh, again, our FIFO dot uh, our, our main is simply going to include this FIFO dot h. And let's take a look at the FIFO dot h. Here's our FIFO dot h. It's got an init. It's got a put, and it's got a get, and it explains everything about what these operations do. Right. And these are the only things we're going to expose so that our data structure remains solid. And here's our, our, our main. Uh, we're going to call FIFO in it. Um, we're assuming that the buffer is of size 6. Really, the capacity is, is 6, though it has room, room, uh, room, the actual physical room is 7. We will never fill it to its capacity because it helps us make that check. Um, so here's our 
rest of our code. We have a loop here. We're gonna add, we're gonna first try and get an item from the buffer. If I try to get an item buffer, this should fail. If it fails, my I'm, I'm populating this array status as I perform operations. The first time I call this status of zero should be a zero because it should be a failure. Status of one should be a success. Success, we, we, are, we successfully add six items and we, when we attempt to add the seventh item, which happens to be the seven here, this should fail. If it fails, um, that status of seven will be uh, uh, again a zero. And then we'll attempt to get two more items, which would both succeed because we, we, we have a full buffer so we can extract items. And now there is room for two more items. So we can put a seven and an eight again and, an, and when we attempt to put a nine, because we only extracted two items, there's only room for two more and we added two and this next one we add should cause a failure. And the last, uh, then I'm, I'm making a few gets, I'm getting all of the items. And by this point, the buffer is empty. So the next, uh, next uh, um, sorry, the, the last uh, extract should be a failure. So let's just run this code and uh, let's uh, check what we get in our in our status array as we as we single step through it. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna run this um, run this um, in simulation right now. So let's uh, let's go through this motion. And um, I I'm also showing something here, which is the actual. Uh, data itself, uh, uh, the FIFO itself, but it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna uh, run it. Um, I hit this breakpoint and I'm gonna watch my status array here to tell us what's happening. So the first item is a failure. So that's a zero right there. The next is also, the next is a success. Um, the next is a success. So I have, um, two is a success, three is a success, four is a success, as you see at the bottom here. Um, and and not only is it successful, I can see what the items are. Actually, I'm gonna change this to uh, ASCII so you can see the actual characters. Uh, uh, let me make it small so you can see it. Oops, uh, there's the four items that I already added, one, two, three, four, and those were my four successful um, inserts and then I'm gonna keep going. Um, at this point, when I attempt to make the seventh call, it should fail. So the seventh call um, is going to be a failure. So status of seven should be a zero. So that's a zero and eight is gonna be a successful, nine is gonna be successful. And then we saw that seven, these three are also, um, the, the this nine is gonna be a failure. So we got two ones and a zero at, at the at the at the next location which happens to be 13 Thir 12 is a 12 is a failure 13 we haven't written yet 13 will be a success and 14 will be a success success and so on because we're simply extracting items one after the other but this last access at this point the FIFO is empty um, and when we try to access the last item, we should get a failure. And that's our last item, which is that. And um, I'll let you play around with this. Um, the, this data structure will come handy uh, when you're working in on lab 10, where you're trying to communicate a, a lot of information between modules and you don't want to ha just use a single global variable um, because you want a buffer of data to be transferred between a background thread and a foreground thread. That's it for this data structure.